What happened? Why why aren't we filming the associates anymore? That momentum was lost and I feel like it's finally been recaptured. Build a big bubble around yourself that keeps the bullshit out. It's one, you gotta believe. Two, you gotta stick to your guns, persevere, realize that you got two hard things to accomplish. You gotta get something to work and you gotta build a team around it or something that can help you scale. Double down on what you're good at. You're clearly good at it if you got it working already. You might as well see it through. Ooh. Wow. Got my folding chair, new apartment. This video, we're gonna call this podcast number one because this is the first podcast that's on my channel. You know, the last time you guys saw me podcast was probably on the Associates a year ago. Well, we just jumped right into it. I just, boom, right into camera mode. But yeah, last time you guys saw me podcast was a year ago on the Associates. It was me, it was Logan. Um, we haven't been running that. We will bring that back at some point. All I hear all the time in my DMs, associates, 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 we gotta bring it back, bring it back. We will. We will bring it back. Um, Logan and I just aren't in the same city right now. So if you're here and you've seen my, my previous podcast, we're just not in the same city right now. We want to do it in person. We're working something out there. Maybe, maybe we'll bring it back maybe towards the end of 2024. Um, but for right now, I'm going on my long form content arc. That means vlogs, that means podcasts, that means YouTube videos of some kind. You know, I don't know how it looks yet. Um, but I am in the grind mode of long form content now. And I'm ready for it completely. And so we're starting episode one on my channel. Basically, I'm going to do two things. I want to accomplish two things in this episode. One, I want to update anyone that's watched the previous podcast or knows me or is just finding me for the first time of like what I've been doing for the past year. And obviously, if you follow me, you know me from Twitter and Instagram. I've been very active over there, uh, more so Twitter. Um, but I'm bringing back the YouTube, like for real. I never really even started YouTube. Um, and then secondarily, I want to hopefully include some lessons or make this uh, video to a degree that would be the ultimate video that I would have, you know, wished that I had when I was first starting. You know, there's a lot of people making content, but there was not a lot of people making content that really applied to me. There's people selling business models and there's lots of different things that you could do or, or ways that you could kind of like take the business, the online stuff, things like that. And, you know, I wish I had a resource for that. So I want to make this podcast that and I want to keep it short and sweet and to the point. And so let's talk about the past year. What happened? Why why aren't we filming the associates anymore? What's going on with our company that we were partnered on? And where are things at right now? So first thing, you know, we stopped filming the podcast. And in hindsight, you know, hindsight's always 2020, right? That's what they say. The podcast and the vlog stuff that we started doing was a massive driver of what allowed our business to grow the way it was growing. People loved us for that. People knew us from that. We were growing from that. And we stopped because it didn't feel like it had a one-to-one kind of like conversion. It's not like, oh, we put a podcast up and we make more money immediately. But what it did have was kind of that like, it, it had like a branded approach. You know, it's where, where people would see the podcast, they would follow us, they would find us from, you know, whoever we were collaborating with. And then they would be like, yo, I, I really fuck with these guys. These guys are cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow them. I'm going to like their stuff. You know, I'm going to go follow them on Twitter, whatever. And then they would come into our ecosystem. And then you know, it would grow the company. I would make connections um, that way. But it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily like a one-to-one. -one. It wasn't like this podcast goes out and then it produces X amount of sales immediately. Um, and I think you know, we miss, we miscalculated there of like, oh, well, the podcast is kind of like a secondary thing and we're not getting that many clips from it for short form. And, you know, the vlogs don't really matter. We need to make sales and we need to make this company work and, and things like that. And that's really one of the reasons we stopped. And the secondary reason we stopped is, you know, we did end up splitting the company. Um, but we hadn't recorded for, you know, two-ish months, I think, two, three months um, b before the company split happened. Now, what happened there? Um, basically we, and I've talked about this before, it's on the launch socials channel. You know, if you look that up, it's pinned, you know, on my, on my main channel here and in the description, but you know, we really decided that it wasn't working anymore together. It wasn't as profitable as we wanted. Um, and this is a mutual decision. It wasn't as profitable as we wanted. I wanted to go more 
B2C. He wanted to go more B2B. Um, and it just, we, we had given it our all and we had, we had moved into a team house together. We had our sales guy there, two sales guys there, we had our marketer there, we had our videographers, me and him. And it just, the revenue was up, up, up. And then, you know, probably didn't look like it on social media, but we were going down, down, down in terms of revenue. And we realized it wasn't working. What it was, whatever happened with the setup or something along those lines, it just wasn't working. It wasn't, you know, producing results towards the goal that we originally had. It was actually taking us in the opposite direction. And that was the moment that we, we sat down at the end of August in 2023, um, almost a year ago now, and we said to ourselves, hey, don't think this is working. Like, what do we do? And we came up with a solution that um, I would take over. Um, and I would keep running it because the company was already pretty much B2C and that's the direction I wanted to go in. And then he would go his separate way. And we did it like men. We did it mutually. We did it cordially. We're still great friends today. We talk all the time. And like I said, we're going to bring the podcast back at the end of the year together. Now, since then, you know, I would say, I would say it's been a very interesting winter for me and, and spring. Um, you know, I had to, and not necessarily had to, but I did, I did completely rebuild the product, completely rebuilt our, our fulfillment at our company that we had shared together. I completely uh, rebuilt our sales team from scratch. There's not a single person on the sales team that was there a year ago that's here today. It's a completely brand new team. Um, I brought in some consultants here and there, and then we leaned that out. You know, we were spending excess money on just miscellaneous things, um, got rid of the team house. And, and overall, I made the company leaner. I made it more profitable. And we just actually had our best margin month um, ever and one of our higher revenue months ever. And so that's amazing. Um, and all the while, I've still been running my faceless Instagram pages and that, that network is growing. And so I have the agency with the, with the consulting company combined and it's working now, you know, but it was a, it was a, I guess you could say it was a dark winter to a degree. Um, I was living in a home in Florida with mold in it and an air conditioner that would just dry me out every single day and night. Um, so I was like constantly dehydrated. Um, I had bad mold. I had these crazy dark circles under my eyes and they're probably still even here to a degree. And I feel like, you know, I moved up Northeast um, to be closer to family for the summer. And in the past month, it's just been like a recovery. Um, had some family stuff going on earlier in the year. Um, that was super, super unfortunate and just like sad. And so I got through all that and I feel like this podcast almost marks a date, like a culmination, the beginning of June of like, we made it out of the other side. You know, there's not a lot of, I, I tell myself this sometimes I was told by a couple people that are also pretty high level, like there's, there's not a lot of people that kind of go, like w would rebuild the company from scratch. They would just kind of like scrap it and start brand new. Um, but I did it, right? No debt, we're highly profitable, our margins are good, we have a solid team, we have core people in place, like things are working. And so, like I said, this marks a, a day of like, wow, I feel, feel like we came out the other end and we, we quote, made it to a degree. But all I view that as is like a transformation. You know, we were going on an uptrend, an up trajectory for a while when we first started our company um, back in 2022 into 2023. And that momentum was lost. And I feel like it's finally been recaptured probably in the past like three months. Um, and things are just like, it's like clicking, like, Things you didn't even know could click are clicking. You know, you, things you didn't even know you could do on fulfillment and on sales and on marketing, they're just, they're all clicking together. And the interesting thing is I always knew, I always knew it would happen, but then it's like, yeah, I, I always knew it would happen and it could happen and I believed in it happening and it took so long for it to happen. It took so long for it to come full circle. And this is really where I get into kind of like, this is the video that I wish I had when I first started, is it took, yeah, it took so long 
for me to come full circle on things from lowest of the lows to, yeah, we got momentum back. We're not at the highs of the highs yet, but we got momentum back and we're feeling good. Um, that I almost lost belief. I almost lost belief in it. But the thing that I didn't lose belief in was belief in myself. I didn't lose belief in myself. You know, there were some really low points where business was barely making money. And it's like, you, you go and make all these sales in a month just for it to get paid out because of ad spend and for people and your margins are super low. That's not fun. That's not fun. That makes you want to shut things down. That makes you want to believe that things aren't working because they aren't in that regard. And it's a constant layer of problem solving. But the reason it kept going and the reason we're still here and I'm still here and I'm like positive and, and happy and I feel like we're out of the other out the other end of this is um, because I didn't give up the belief in myself. You know, and it sounds so cliche. I, I say that and I start to like chuckle a little bit. But it does sound... It sounds super cliche, but it is a fact that if I didn't believe in my ability and I didn't believe in myself and I didn't believe that I could do it, I wouldn't have. It was a very hard thing to do, but we built momentum. We're still here. We introduced new products. We're going on the up and up. it's like we're going next level. We have we've probably the healthiest company that I've personally ever had to date in my five, six years of, of running online businesses. So let me give you guys a quick recap on my story. Let me reintroduce myself to you guys so you guys understand the, the angle that I'm coming from. And then I want to talk about what I wish I had when I first started. And so let's recap. 2017 is October. October of 2017, I drop out of college. I was there for two months. I was a dual major, economics and finance. Drop out. Don't want to do it. I had like some stupid philosophy as they do and the professor was gay and it was just a whole, I didn't want to touch that essay, not for me. And so I just said, hey, I'm not doing it. And uh, I, I just, I'm done. I'm done. Because it was just a constant buildup. I knew after a month, I was like, I don't know about this place because I'm here to get rich. You know, I'm convinced by my guidance counselor in high school that you go to college to make money. You go to college to set up your future and be rich. I just want to own a business, right? And at the end of the day, um, that wasn't happening. That wasn't happening for me. I wasn't getting what I wanted. And it was like almost like a slight depression to a degree. I wasn't depressed. You know, I don't, I don't like, like when I get sad or I'm unhappy or frustrated about something, I just change my situation. So I wasn't really depressed, but I had those symptoms of like, yeah, I don't like it here. And so I left and my mom, and my dad, uh, my uncle, too, my sister, were probably the only people that believed in me. The only people that believed that I had what it took. They didn't, they didn't know anything about online business. I didn't know anything about online business. But they knew that there was a, a different path out there. And, you know, looking back on it, like dropping out of college isn't that big a deal. I think it's a big deal about because of how it was, like to a degree, because of how it was hyped up, you know, in high school and and all your friends that are smart. I was kind of like naturally a little bit gifted, a little, a little bit smart. And I never studied like the, the AP US history test. I got a five on it. I read the whole book the night before, didn't really study throughout the year and then went in and just aced it. There's a fuzzy here. And that was kind of like how I operated. Um, and so I get to college, I hate it. I drop out after two months. My parents, my uncle, my sister, are the only people that believe in me. Everyone's telling me to take classes. Everyone's telling me to go back. And I just didn't see it. I just didn't see that vision. It wasn't, it wasn't for me. It wasn't, it wasn't the vision that I had. I didn't, I didn't think that that was going to create abundance, bountiful abundance in my life. And I, it didn't. It, was, it wasn't going to. Like I would, probably would have wasted my time completely. And what I did is I, I, for a week, I'm like, what do I, need? What do, I do? I need money. That's, okay, so, so I drop out for a week. What do I do? I need money. Um... And I decide that the best route to go is to get a car sales job. And so I had a connection at the local Chevy dealership. I shoot them an email, come in, they interview me. They say, we'll give you a shot. And I was there for a year. And about four or five months in, I started building drop shipping stores. I, I had discovered the online business, how to make money online. Like, what is this? I saw some ads, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I, I started a bunch of drop shipping stores. They never really went anywhere. 
I do remember, you know, I, I did get some sales here and there, maybe break even, probably negative for the most part. I was just pushing that car sales money in, in, in. And I had, you know, I was, I was living at home at the time. I was 18, 19. And, you know, my parents took care of my shelter, my food. They supported me. They believed in me. That was huge. You know, I know a lot of people don't have that. And so I'm so grateful for that. That was so huge. You know, my dad gave me, he's like, here's a thousand bucks um, to start the business. And that meant a ton to me. Like that was, that, and looking back, that was so huge. That helped me so much. I didn't have to worry about survival. I had to worry about building. And that was great. Um, and so I think it was April 13th, April 13th or 19th. I have a screenshot of it somewhere. First Shopify sale. I think it was like $34.99 or $24.99 or something along those lines. Um, and this was 2018. April 13th, April 19th, 2018, and I was, I was sitting at my desk at work, like, ecstatic. Whoa, whoa, that just happened. That's crazy. It's just on my phone, my little iPhone 6 or 6S, I think it was. And that's where things like, okay, this is real. Like, I, I could do this. I spent that entire summer trying and failing, trying and failing, trying and failing. Um, different dropshipping stores at the dealership, they loved me. I was a hard worker. Um, didn't really like authority. But they loved me there, and they were trying to kind of train me for manager role, you know, as a young guy. Um, but come September, October of 2018, I had discovered Instagram pages because I was paying all of these Instagram pages to promote my dropshipping products. And what I did at that time was I was like, wait a minute. Uh, well, these guys are making all this money. Why don't I build my own drop shipping or not my own drop ship. Why don't I build my own Instagram pages and collect the promo money? So I started building. I started a couple pages. They didn't really work too good. And then I got into like the business entrepreneurship, like motivation niche, started just reposting stuff, clicked, blew up. And that's how a lot of this is for you young guys that might be listening, or maybe, maybe you're not young. Maybe you're listening you're just getting started and you're like, well, well, what does it take to start? And, and how does it work? Well, a lot of it is just trial and error, and then it clicks. One day, one day it clicks because you've put enough pieces together where inevitably it has to work, and you've tried enough where inevitably it has to work. The only people I've seen actually fail are the people that don't try, but in their head they take a little bit of action there. They buy like a course or they do like one little thing or they run some ad or they send an email. Like, well, I tried. You didn't really try. You didn't really give a shit. You didn't, you didn't send out volume. I sent out volume. I started and failed seven dropshipping stores. I started three or four Instagram pages before the first one hit. And then I, I got it. Like the strategy works. Oh, that makes complete sense, right? I know why it works now. And I started building and building and building. I had about 12K followers-ish. I don't know the exact number in the first month. I hit 100K followers within the first four months of that. And during that time, I quit my job. I started making like six, eight, ten a month selling an info product on those Instagram pages. Now that led us into 2019. Um, 2019 was like iffy for me. You know, I was doing a little bit here and there. I should have doubled down on what was working. I should have seen that that worked and doubled down on it. Right. So if you're watching this again, you're just starting, or maybe you're in business already. These are some lessons that I have. Is like one, it's going to take time to click. So you have to persevere. Two. When, when you get something working, do not stop it, okay? It's like right now with, with our business, you know, I, I haven't stopped the current marketing channels to try something new because I know that if I shut them down, that's idiotic. They're working. I have a sales team that relies on me. I have a fulfillment team that relies on me. I have a marketing team that relies on me. I have clients that rely on me to make sure that they're all taken care of. I can't stop the marketing on one profitable channel that's working. And obviously, that no brainer that sounds idiotic. But there's always these shiny objects. There's always these shiny objects that will pop up. And it's like, oh, well, dropshipping and then Instagram pages. And then, oh, I can do high ticket sales. And then, well, what if they make me a manager at the dealership? And, blah. and there's 10 different things. What you need to do is pick one and go all in on it. And then if there's a better opportunity kind of within that, maybe you pivot a little bit. But you want to parlay the skills that you already have. So from dropshipping, I parlayed a lot of the content skills into the Instagram pages, and then it worked. 
And then in 2019, at the end of 2019, I parlayed that again. I started building my personal brand on Twitter, started on Instagram too a little bit. And then we started signing clients. We started an agency with my first business partner and we signed clients from Twitter and we signed clients from Instagram. And we started helping people grow their Instagram brands and their, their personal brands because we were so good at it. We had pages. We had a bunch of Instagram pages, Facebook pages. We were so good at it. We used that traffic. We said, we, we put a shout out up on our pages and said, hey, go follow our client, right? And so that was the first, and we parlayed that momentum. We parlayed those skills into the next big opportunity. And that business was my first 100K a month business, that agency. And that happened in 2020, 2021, somewhere in there. Um, by, by the end of 2020, I know we were at 50K. And in 2021, we were, we were in the 100K range. Um, and that was all parlayed off the momentum from those first things. Like the, the, the agency really came from the drop shipping, right? That momentum was built into the pages and then was built into the agency. Um, and then from there, you know, I built it into the consulting company. I still have those pages today. And so what I really realized along the way is that when something is working, you, you don't stop it, okay? But maybe there is a better opportunity and you start to pivot into it. You start to move your energy into it. And a lot of it is like choosing the bigger thing rather than the smaller thing. You know, if I wanted to keep growing the agency, it's like I could probably double it, maybe triple it easily. But above that, can I 10x it easily? Probably not. But the consulting company and the personal brand, not only could I double what we were doing at the, I could probably 10x, 20x, 30x what we were doing at the agency more like way more easily like it's a better opportunity and so i parlayed that momentum and those skills that i had developed and just my background and my social proof i parlayed that into the consulting company and that's how we've developed that's how we we operate now and that's how that's how we've grown is it's just a constant iteration and stacking and so past the consulting company what could i see happening i could see myself being in private equity for you know, online social media type of businesses, um, because that's probably the next thing. Probably in the next year or two, we'll cap out the opportunity of the consulting because my personal brand will get so big. Um, we'll, we'll grow the consulting company so big. The team will be massive and I could keep going. I could double, I could triple it, but I also could go to the next level and to the next big opportunity. And I start to rotate that momentum. In. But just because you rotate that momentum and those skills doesn't mean you have to stop doing what you're currently doing. Like I said, I have the consulting company, but I also still have all my Instagram pages and I still run the agency on the side. It's just systemized and the pages are just systemized. The consulting company is the main thing I work on. And even then I'm, I'm starting to rotate out. Like fulfillment is handled. Sales are handled. Marketing is handled. My main job now is to keep up with customers and make sure they're happy because that's 100%. Like when you start a company and you have customers like that, the number one thing you need to take care of is the customers, okay? Your business doesn't exist without your customers. I've never had a chargeback on this business or my agency. It's because I've taken care of my customers. I've always negotiated. I've always been cordial. I've always taken care of my customers. And I think it's also the brand I've built. They come from my personal brand. They know I'm a straightforward person, so they're straightforward with me. They want to re we've given refunds before. Sure. You know, we're in the wrong, whatever, fine. Or, or just not working for them. Fine. Good. But I've never had a problem like that because I've always taken care of my customers first. And then additionally, besides taking care of my customers right now, my secondary job or really main job, right? Along with that is to go network with people, jump on podcasts like this, film my own podcast, film sit downs, do vlogs, be everywhere, be content, long form, all of that everywhere, all of the time. That's my job. That's what I do best anyway. And we ran up the podcast to 10K subs. We did like 30 episodes. That's what I do best anyway is the networking, is the podcast, stuff like that. That's my strong suit. And so what I've done is I've compressed everything. This is, my, this is like my next main leap in, in where we can 10X our revenue specifically and our, our growth is I've compressed everything into what I'm good at and nothing else. All the admin stuff, somebody else handles that. All the numbers and reporting, somebody else handles I just look at it, okay, I gotta be aware, but somebody else handles that and delivers it to me. All the, all the marketing back end, the tracking, whatever, this and that, 
It's handled. I know how to do it, but it's handled for me because it's not the best use of my brain power. The best use of my brain power is my 1% skills. My, like the skills, it's like the 80-20 rule. If you guys are familiar with the 80-20 rule, cool. If you're not, go look it up. It's a very common thing. But my 20% that produces my 80% of results is me on camera and me taking care of my customers. And so that's what I'm focusing on. I've streamlined everything to the point where I can just do this. I can do this. I can take care of my customers. I can look over my IG pages and all my assets. I can manage my money, my crypto, my stocks, all my assets like that. I, I'm a money manager at this point. And so basically, I say that to, I say all of that to give you guys a background, but also so you know my philosophy on things. And I want to leave you guys that want to start a company or want to start a bit, want to start something online. Maybe you're young, maybe you're just starting, maybe you're in remote sales and you're like, I want to start my own thing. Or maybe you've already started something and you want to go to the next level. Or maybe you're at the next level because I have a lot of you guys in my audience that are at the next level, same level as me, stuff like that. Maybe you're doing 20, 30, 40, 50K a month. You're like, dude, I want to level up. I, I, where do I go next? You know, what's the next thing? I have a very, a very strong audience in that regard. But whatever level you're at, there's two things I want to share with you guys. First thing, well, there's two hard things in business. They really go together. And the first hard thing in business is to get something working, is to get somebody to follow you online, is to build a brand, is to get a product to sell, is to have some kind of sales funnel working, is to take, take money from someone, like obviously with their consent, but is, is to collect cash or, or grow an audience. That is the first hardest thing. Do you understand what it takes to go from idea to something tangible that has produced a result? It, you have to move mountains to go here. Now, I've tried a lot of different businesses in between, you know, different, different little partnerships, different little projects, different little things here and there and everywhere. The, the amount of energy that it takes to go from idea that you're cooking up in your mind, that could be a good idea, to fully formed project that is existing and has customers coming in and money and revenue coming in and something that you could even choose to grow, especially at the start or especially when you've just gotten started, is massive. And so if you have something working, I encourage you to, before you pivot to anything or before you get some kind of shiny object, is to double down on that. Double down on what you're good at. You're clearly good at it if you got it working already. You might as well see it through. And something that I, I really think in regards to that is like, you know, some people, maybe, maybe they're making money with something that they're not too passionate about. Um, but the thing I have to tell you is there's nothing wrong with making money. Nothing wrong with making money. Making money provides for your family, provides for yourself, allows you, know, you, allows you to help other people, right, your customers. Um, making money allows you to go and invest in the things you want. And making money allows you to do whatever, you, take care of your health, live longer. You, know, you, can, you can move mountains when you have uh, money coming in. And so Maybe what you're doing isn't necessarily the, the thing you're passionate about, but you have it working. And what it takes to get something working is probably one of the hardest things in business at these like sub eight figure levels. And I would say that the second hardest thing in business is to find good people and train good people and manage good people and scale because you need people to scale. Yes, you can have automations. Yes, you can have AI. Yes, you can have, I don't know, you, you can have VAs, whatever. But to have the good VAs and the well-built AI and quality right-hand people that you can rely on, or if you get sick or you have a family event and you have a team of people that can take care of things, do you trust them? To get that is probably one of the hardest things in business, again, at this sub-eight-figure level. And so if you can figure out how to get something working, and you can figure out how to put the right people in place, you can scale basically to whatever heights you can imagine. And you know, when I started, I've done, I've done over 100K a month consistently for the past three years, I think. It's kind of embarrassing. It should be higher. We should be at seven figures a month already. But I've done that for the past three years consistently. And it's been a bit of a plateau for me, and it's not something that I'm too excited about. And I probably share similar beliefs in regards to the, the way I look at going from 100K a month to a, a million a month 
is the way a lot of you that might be starting look at going from 0 to 10 or from 20 to 50 or from 50 to 100, you know? Um, well, that's the next big thing. And then you're going to hit it and you're going to be like, that's, that's not enough. I was wrong. And I know for a fact that that's exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to hit it and I'll be like, that's wrong. I want to go bigger because that's what happened at 100 after about three or four months. Um, now, because of business partner splits and back and forth and things, I think we lost some momentum, but we're back. Like I said, like the, the momentum's rising. And, you know, when, when you're at zero and you want to go to 10, you can't even conceptualize 100. You know, unless you've been, you know, maybe, maybe you're a little bit older, maybe you're late 20s or 30s and you're like, okay, like I've, I've been at companies and I see this. But like at the, at the start, you can't even conceptualize going from a zero to 100K a month or making 100K a month online or like what that actually takes or, or making a million a month online. When I, when I was first starting, all I wanted to do was replace my car sales income, replace my car sales income, make 10K a month, whatever. It's barely even 100K a year. And like I wasn't even, I wasn't even trying to get to 100 i was just like i just want that like online money and that freedom and that makes a lot of sense to me i'm a smart guy like let me let me try to go get that and you get it and it's like taxes and expenses and software and this and that and the other and all this stuff and it doesn't it doesn't fulfill that void yet yeah, money won't fulfill that void what you do with the money can fulfill like the void or like of what you want to do but there's always going to be a need for more because there's always a level up and I think about it, it's where, you know, where I'm at right now, it's like we're on track for, you know, a million profit or more this year. You know, it'll, it'll likely be uh, a lot more than that, but I'm being conservative with that estimate. And I'm like, okay, that, like, that's cool. But what about Bezos? Like, look at his numbers. Well, that's just five levels ahead, you know, because I look at it like, okay, we're, we're here. I'm ascending to like, where Hormozy was at with Gym Launch before he sold, like, when, when maybe he was like year two at Gym Launch or something, and he was like caking. I'm ascending into that level right now, and then Hormozy is ascended into or is ascending into like that billionaire status level. I think there's like low level billionaire, and then you go up a couple levels, and then there's like Bezos Musk level billionaire. And it's like that's only four or five levels from where I'm at. There's only there's only four or five like 10x jumps from where I, where I'm at. And those 10 X jumps aren't just, you know, they're not just revenue levels, they're consciousness levels and awareness levels. And, and what you, what you do in, in each, in each case is like, it's a, it's a little bit different. And so for me, I kind of come back to the point of I'm compressing everything into my 20% that produces my 80% of results right now. That's, that's what I'm doing. And so if you're just starting, you're like looking at me like, damn, like, Wow, how do he get that? He's doing 100k a month for for three years in a row, and he's trying to go to a million a month. Like, wow, like that's unbelievable. Blah blah blah. Stop for a second and realize that the same things that I'm doing now, in practice, in like the mental side of things, that's the same things you guys can do to get to the 10, and then the 50, and then the 100, and then and then the million yourself. And it's one, you got to believe. Two. You got to stick to your guns, persevere, realize that you got two hard things to accomplish. You got to get something to work and you got to build a team around it or something that can help you scale. And then the final thing is you need to compress what you think about and what you do into one singular box. So for me, I already told you guys, it's helping my customers, making sure my theme pages run, checking all the numbers and shit like that, whatever, managing people. And the final thing is being on camera and, and content. If my only job is content, I'm producing a shit ton of content, right? And so if, if you're watching this and you're, you're smoking weed and you're drinking a couple, times a, a couple times a week both and you're hanging out with disgusting girls from high school still in your, your early 20s and um, you, you're not on your grind in the gym and uh, you're still hanging out with friends that just like don't really get it and you're trying, you're trying to like make it to a degree you gotta, you gotta like push all that stuff away. Or you're trying like five different things in business, but this one is like kind of working. You gotta push all this, this bullshit away. All the naysayers, all the things that are keeping you distracted. You only have a finite amount of time. Oop, the audio probably got messed up there because I hit this. But you only have a finite amount of time in a day. And so you gotta push all the garbage away from you, 
Create a bubble around yourself. Bubbles are good. The liberals will tell you that being in a bubble is bad. The liberal arts degrees in the college, you've got to get outside your bubble. I want you to create a bubble. Build a big bubble around yourself that keeps the bullshit out. Okay? Build that bubble. And then inside that bubble, you focus on exactly what you need to focus on to get your result. I guarantee if you have an agency today and you say, I want to get to 10K a month and your package is 2K and all you need to do is sign five people that can pay you 2K a month, you're at that 10K. I guarantee if you sat down right now and sent cold emails and cold DMs for, I don't know, 24 seven for two weeks in a row, I guarantee you would have progress on that goal. Now it comes down to how good you are and there's other you know, tactics and skills in there, but I guarantee the sheer volume and focus will level you up. It'll level you up mentally, It'll level you up skill-wise. You'll become the person that's more capable of making that level of money and being that level of success in business. You'll be on your gym grind. You won't be distracted by bullshit. And then you'll be making 10K a month. And then you will cop the crazy car. And then you'll pull up to the premium hose from high school. And you'll be having all this fun. Okay? And so what you need to do is you need to lock in. You need, you need to build your bubble. And you need to focus on the thing that's actually going to get you to the next level. That's what I did at the start. I shut everything out. Focused on that. Did that. Boom. Did that twice. Did it again. Did it again. And then I got to 100 and, and I coasted a little bit, whatever. And now we're locked in again. And I know we're, we got a straight shot to a million a month before this year is over. We're trying to get there last year. We lost the momentum. It's fine. But I know it's happening. And you guys can see, you're watching this, it's like there's a self-belief here. We should have had it last year, we're going to have it this year, we're going to level up, this is it. You got you to be on that same energy, that same wave, that same vibe, if you, if you want it, right? If you don't want it, then it's whatever, like, just admit that to yourself and, like, go chill. Like, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want it, that's what it takes. And so, that's my update, guys. That's where I've been at, that's what I've been doing, um... This is kind of like the video that I wish I had, maybe a little bit, some of, some of this stuff that, that I wish I had on, on like the, the lessons on the mental side of like what it takes to level up each step of the way, my story a little bit. Um, that's what I wish I had when I started. And so that is my first podcast back. I'm going to be doing a couple more of these, um, maybe some solo. I'm probably doing like some selfie solo, probably do some vlogs, you know, bringing our videographer uh, back out, going to link up with our writer, we're going to do some traveling, it's going to be fun, maybe buy a crazy car, got a couple in mind, um, trade some crypto, do some business, just have fun, network with a bunch of people, um, bring a bunch of people on the podcast, some of my clients, some people I know, some friends, stuff like that, and it's going to be good, that's where we're at, um, so one, I appreciate you guys tuning in, this is amazing, we're back, it feels so good to be on camera, I don't know if I'm natural or not or whatever. I got to watch this thing back. I don't know if I feel natural or not or feel stiff or whatever, but, but it feels good to be on camera properly again, long form style. It's amazing. I've been doing tons of Zoom calls and recording videos, you know, training videos for the clients and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, being on camera for YouTube is a little, a little different. Being on camera for podcasts is a little bit different. And so, one, it feels good to be back. Two, I appreciate you guys being here and watching this. And then three, if you want to get in touch, one, you can DM me on Instagram. I'll put my at, you know, in the description. It's on, it's on here at Nick, N-I-C-K-R-G-R-S, which is an abbreviation for my last name. A lot of people think it's, it's an abbreviation for something else. It's not. Um, you, can, you can message me on Instagram. You can message me on Twitter. If you want to work with us, our links are below. Okay, if you want to grow your brand on social media as a personal brand or you want to grow a faces page on social media and Instagram, um, the links are below. You can sign up there. And then I appreciate guys. If you enjoy this, drop a subscription. Or if you're listening on the podcast side, you know, just drop a follow or whatever. Save it in your Spotify, your Apple, things like that. And I'm gonna be uploading a couple times a week. Uh, I'm not gonna not gonna say exactly because then people are gonna be DMing me like, oh, dude, you did, you said you're gonna do five times a week and it's only been four. Like, what? It's gonna be a couple times a week at least. Um, and yeah. I'm, I'm super back on YouTube. We're super back with the podcast. We're super back recording long form. Appreciate you guys being here, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for coming. <laughs>